Everything is fixable. Everyone can heal no matter what they've been suffering with or how long they've been suffering. If they find out their own bioindividual deficiencies and toxicities, they can rebalance their body and live the life they want. I'm Dr. Stephen Kral. I went from suffering with multiple disease diagnoses, seeing over two dozen different practitioners, to finally healing myself 10 years later, and I'm one of the passionate few. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Passionate Few Podcast. Today, it's your host, Omar here, and today we have a very special episode as we sit down with none other than Dr. Stephen Cabral, known as the author of The Rain Barrel Effect. Dr. Cabral's work has reached millions of people around the world as his own story of being a doctor of naturopathy started when he was diagnosed with tons of health ailments. He was in his younger teens, and after struggling for over a decade to figure it out, saw over 50 doctors, tried over 100 different protocols to better his health, and ultimately founded the path of natural and integrative health practicing, which he now practices today. So in this interview, we're gonna get into his story, but also some of the things you can do as an entrepreneur in your life or business or wherever you're at to really take your health, your diet, your nutrition, your mindset, your sleep, your testosterone, whatever it is in your area of life that you're looking to improve to the next level. So no further ado, pay attention to the very end. And thank you so much, Dr. Cabral, for being on the show today. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, my man. So for those of you that don't know, um, Dr. Cabral, is his work is extensive and incredible, right? I know you started out as a personal trainer and you literally took your own, you know, your biggest void and turned it to your biggest value with health. So before we get into what you do today and all these amazing things that you're helping people with their health and well-being with today, talk a little bit about your story, Dr. Cabral. Where did this all begin for you? Where did these challenges and these health ailments really start for you and what really inspired you to turn it around yeah absolutely and it's been you know it's been a wild 25 year journey you know when i was 17 years old 18 years old it was my senior of high school and uh i got incredibly sick i woke up one morning and all of the glands in my body were swollen so basically we know about most people have gotten swollen glands in their neck before whether you had mono or the flu or something like that but you have lymph nodes all over your body and so I woke up one morning and my eyes were basically swollen shut. I had swollen lip nodes over my body. My tongue was swollen. And so, you know, I didn't know. I, I went to the doctors and they looked very troubled. They ran a battery of tests, couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, except that my body was not uh, properly regulating white blood cells. So they tested for cancer and HIV and all sorts of like wild things, which is pretty scary when you're 17 years old. I mean, scary at any age, but certainly scary then. And this went on for two years. Um, it took two years to find out to have dozens of medical doctors. I mean, chief of staff of hospitals around Boston, Massachusetts. So these are some of the best of the best. I, I was end up having and diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called rheumatoid arthritis, yeah. Addison's disease, which is the inability to produce cortisol. So you walk around with flu-like symptoms like a zombie all day long. Mm. Uh, can't balance inflammation. I had insomnia. I had things like POTS, myalgic encephalomyelitis. I had type 2 diabetes because I couldn't regulate blood sugar. Um, due to my adrenals, because the adrenals are a big part of regulating blood sugar. And they were really trying times. So my body went first. And then after that, I, you know, my mind went. I became overwhelmed and anxious and depressed because I went from being someone that played a sport every season and doing pretty well in school to having all of that taken from me to having brain fog and joint pain and just, you know, overall fatigue. I couldn't sleep at night. My body was so dysregulated. So after that, I was put on a handful of medications. I, I knew, even back then, even though I had no background in natural health, that I just knew it wasn't the right path. Right. So got certified as a nutritionist, a personal trainer when I was 18, 19 years old. And that has just been a progressive lead up until I was 27. At 27 years old, I saw a lot of natural health practitioners as well. I would get better. I would relapse, get better, relapse. Met her, Dr. Pete. She shared with me how to get well from a foundational level. Finding out my deficiencies and my toxicities, basically when I have too little vitamins or minerals or omegas and too much of something in my body through at-home lab testing, re-regulated my body through Ayurvedic and, and natural health, naturopathic medicine, right. and I got well within six months. So 10 years of suffering, 17 to 27, better in six wow. months. So I committed to just 
saying this is going to be the rest of my life. Hey guys, we'll get right back to this video in a sec. But first, I have a quick question for you. Are you watching this video and wondering to yourself, man, I love this content, but I want to learn how to actually put this into action? If so, you're not alone. Over the past few years, I've had the privilege of interviewing over 100 multi-million and multi-billion dollar entrepreneurs finding out truly what was responsible for the daily actions, habits, and success principles that allowed them to have such massive achievement. I boiled it down into a totally simple transformational program that you can check out 100% free. And this system manifests in the form of a 21-day challenge, and I'm calling it 21 Strong. And no matter where you're at in life, participation in this challenge will help you take your life and business to that next level. If you want to find out more and join me and thousands of entrepreneurs around the world, you can check it out yourself and sign up at 21daystrong.com or click the link below to join. I look forward to seeing you guys inside of the program. Let's get back to the video. This is what I'm going to do. And, and um, it's, been a, it's been an amazing ride. It really has. So it was a big part of it. I know a big part of it was meeting a doctor, right? That sort of shifted your perspective for the first time, right? Can you talk a little bit about that first discovery? Because a lot of people, uh, you know, they hear about these alternative means of medicine that are more natural, but they're used to, you know, big pharma and the ad campaigns and their doctor and right, what where mom goes, where dad goes, right? They're used to these traditional forms of safe institutionalized health. The challenge is, as we all know, is that there's no money in health, all the money's in sickness, right? And so one of the biggest challenges is that people are sort of stuck on this hamster wheel. So were you also skeptical initially, or were you so desperate with your health that you were willing to try anything at that time? Well, we also have to keep in mind, this is the, this is the late 90s, so there's no internet. It's not YouTube, there's no there's no alternative education, yeah. Where do you go? I mean, you could look at a yellow pages, but you didn't have to know about natural health. I didn't know anything about natural health at all, neither did my parents. So we would go to our general practitioner and then a specialist, right? You get bounced around. And even after that, you know, okay, I have Addison's disease, rheumatoid arthritis. Type. What do you get? Well, you get a handful of medication, right? And so I was put on a handful of medication. So conventional medicine, I mean, I, I want to be fair and I want to be honest. There's nothing better for acute based care, meaning like your life is on the line than conventional medicine, emergency medicine. They will keep you alive. That's great. But they will never, because it is not part of the education nor the game plan, they will never help you get well. Mm -hmm. Meaning get well is I no longer have Addison's disease. That's supposed to be incurable. No more type 2 diabetes, no more autoimmune issues. So all the people blaming on their genetics, sure. Both I mean, My grandparents had rheumatoid arthritis. Both my parents had rheumatoid arthritis. I got it at 17, not 40 years old or 50 years old when they got it. So yeah, it's in my genetics, but that doesn't mean I have to have it because now I'm in my mid 40s and I don't have it anymore. And I feel better than ever. I have more energy than ever. So it's always this. It's just like entrepreneurship. So I've been on my own also as a business owner since 23 years old. Like I, I worked for a couple of years uh, and that's it. And then I went off on my own and I've always had mentors. I've always believed in mentors, but eventually you find one mentor that it just clicks. And it's not like the ones before that weren't great. Well, some aren't great, but some are. And you build off of that. You don't even, you would never reach the mentor you need to reach or the coach you need to reach or doctor until you went through probably a few because you wouldn't realize what you stumbled upon. I realized when I spoke with Dr. Pete that, she wasn't looking at one thing through one lens. So it's the same for entrepreneurship. Like, okay, well, if you only have one skill set, you look at everything through that one skill set. So mm -hmm. she knew about naturopathic medicine, functional medicine. She knew about some bioregulatory medicine. She knew about um, at-home uh, functional medicine lab testing too. And so when I went to her, ran the labs, saw her exactly what I was low in, like certain B vitamins, B6 was one of them, which almost nobody talks about, P5P. Uh, certain forms of magnesium. I learned about uh, the immune system, TH1, TH2, dominance of the immune system. And I had read hundreds and thousands of books. Like I've read literally, like I was trying to get well, but I couldn't put it together. So what a great mentor does is they just help you create a system of thinking. You already take your knowledge and your uniqueness and put it together. That's what she did for me. I had done the work and she helped me to assimilate that and put it together. And then she gave me the push to go back to school, get my doctor degree and Take this to the next level. And that's what I I love that, man. And then fast forward, you know, a couple decades, you're the founder of also the IHP Institute for Integrative Health Practitioners, as well as Equal Life. And that's amazing to think about that, man. It's probably the 17 year old that you probably wouldn't have believed you'd be here today, huh? No chance whatsoever. <laughs> I, did not, I didn't even know what natural health was, couldn't even fathom um, this. You know, even in my early 20s, like I always wanted to, I, I made the promise at 19 years old. When I went into the first natural health practitioner's office, 
And I said, listen, if I ever get well, I'm going to share this with the world. And so it took until I was 28, 29 to do that. Meaning like from a, well, actually 30 years old from a uh, functional medicine, integrative health perspective, you know, but then I did it. And, and I had two very large clinics in Boston, Massachusetts, where we saw over 20,000 appointments a year. We saw over a quarter of a million people. People would come from all over. Wow. We had a six month wait list because what we were doing worked. Like that's the thing too, is like, there's all sorts of things that you can learn about advertising and marketing. And, and I have amazing teams that help with those things. But really what matters is the work that you do has to work and it has to be of value. And so all I ever tried to do was help people heal from their specific issues and then started a podcast, reached people that way, uh, which is just, again, like it's literally started out with a hundred downloads a day. And now we reach two to 3 million people a month on the podcast, but that's been over six or seven years. And that's and usually then, every day. Every day. Yeah. And IHP came about wow. just because people hear about it and then they say, well, I want to do what you're doing. And I said, well, there is no real organization that teaches you a practice, the methodologies, not just like little bits and pieces about nutrition, but like, how do you make this integrative? And so that's how that came about. So everything in life, I see it as a stepping stone. Uh, even with me getting well, I had to go through all the things that didn't work and then hundreds, I mean, literally I met with dozens of practitioners and I tried over a hundred different protocols. And by doing all the things that don't work, if you vow not to repeat your mistakes, you eventually have to figure it out because there's always so many different ways to do it. Right. No, hundred percent. I love that. And also too, I know you specialize in wellness, anti-aging and weight loss. So for a lot of entrepreneurs listening, right? A lot of their, we got some notes here. A lot of them are going to be fascinated to learn about things like toxins, right? Inside and outside of the body and how much a lot of times that affects you. Um, you know, fat versus muscle, how that's created, right? We put a little poll up. People wanted to know about foods that cause inflammation, right? The best foods for snacking during the day to offset meals while not, you know, create doing more harm than good. How to improve focus, how to improve sleep, how to improve testosterone. And I know a lot of what you talk about on the rain barrel effect. And I love that you named it the rain barrel effect because it kind of touches on all of those things. Can you give people the reason uh, why you use the metaphor, the rain barrel effect? I know what it is. But I think you'd probably tell it way better to the audience because all these things can really be deduced down from that same premise, right? That's, that is what it's all about. I mean, it really is. So everything that you do has to have a foundation. And I work from what is referred to as first principles. And you, you probably talked about that with your audience. It's basically like it's foundational based thinking. So for example, you know, let's say that a guy's in his 20s or 30s, there's no way they should be using testosterone replacement therapy. And I don't mean this in a negative way towards anyone else. Like, I don't mean this negative, but it means that if you're in your 20s and 30s and even 40s, to be honest with you, if your testosterone's low, you want to find out why. I mean, like you have to find out why, because there's something wrong with your body. If if your testosterone is low, it's a sign of a deeper issue. So if you just inject testosterone in your body, sure, you start to feel better, improve your mood, your ambition, your drive, muscle tone, you start burning more body fat, you you are feel great. Problem is you're now masking. That's basically like conventional medicine again. It's like you have super high cholesterol, you take a stat, and we'll figure out why you had super high cholesterol. Right. right. So that's what we do. So the rain barrel effect talks about let's use low testosterone for an example in a guy in anywhere through their 30s, 40s, and 50s. So um all the things that fill up a rain barrel. And the people don't know what a rain barrel is because I didn't know what it was back in the day, not you know, living in, in Medford, Massachusetts, right outside Boston. But basically, when you have rainwater coming off your roof and down your gutters, you don't want it to all the time just go onto your grass, your patio, because it ruins the grass, ruins the patio. So you collect the water in a rain barrel. Well, it usually has a cover. And unless you're checking and then emptying the rain barrel, it eventually overflows and it destroys the same thing you were trying to protect. Mm-hmm. So what a rain barrel is for the human body is we are exposed to pesticides, uh, glyphosate, phthalates, bisphenol A, uh, all of these uh, heavy metals. Like Again, look at what just happened in Ohio. Well, these things happen on smaller scales all over the world. You're getting, every time you drink a glass of tap water or drink ice from a restaurant, you're getting small amounts of fluoride and chlorine that affect your gut microbiome and your thyroid. Well, again, like no one glass of tap water is probably going to kill you, to be honest with you. But over time, yeah, you accumulate all of these things in your body. And I was skeptical, and you were kind of saying that earlier. Yeah, I was absolutely skeptical of all these things. But the thing is, when you lab test, it takes away the skepticism. 
because I don't have to guess anymore. It's like, okay, you don't believe that, or you believe you get enough omega-3s. Oh, well, let's, let's lab test. Let's see your omega-6 versus your omega-3 levels. We don't need to have a debate or argument about this. Do right. you think you have heavy metals? Yes or no? Well, maybe you don't, but you'd be one of the rare few people that don't. So let's just lab test. Let's just find out. And so my skepticism really was overcome with natural health is one, I start at work. But number two, for my degree, I had to do 2,300 hours of internship. And I spent the majority of those, or at least half of those hours overseas. I studied in Ayurveda clinics in Sri Lanka, all over India. Um, I studied in a traditional Chinese medicine hospital in China and Beijing, old Beijing. I studied in Europe. I studied over the US. And so I thought that there'd be one form of system like conventional medicine, but it'd be natural health that would work. And I would use that. What I realized was that all forms of medicine work. You need to use them all, but at the right time and with the right person. Mm. And it goes back to the rain barrel effect. What is overcoming? Why is that person's body not balanced how it should? And so for testosterone, higher levels of inflammation, not enough sleep, um, higher levels of stress, which decreases testosterone. I mean, high levels of cortisol will decrease testosterone over time, chronically. Um, not enough recovery-based time low vitamin C, low zinc, uh, low B vitamins, all of these things imbalance testosterone. And so they're, they're straightforward enough to look at and repair if you understand why it happened in the first place. And I love that. And I know in a couple of minutes here, we're also going to get into my lab reading because I actually took uh, one of your guys' tests, which I have back here. Uh, oh, there's a testosterone test back there. But uh, I took the uh, hair tissue mineral analysis test. I've taken three of your guys' tests, but I know we're going to get into one of them about minerals and metals here in a couple of minutes. But I just wanted to touch um, really quick on some of the other things that people mentioned, right? And I would love just your quick, you know, insight, maybe like a quick fact on what, for lack of a better expression, Fs it up for most people and then quick tips on it, right? So like I'll list one thing and you tell me quick tips on it. Um, as it relates to TRT, a lot of people, there's been a lot of talk recently about peptides. Um, I'm sure you've heard about it, seen about it. What are your thoughts on, you know, you shared a little bit about TRT, but what are your thoughts on peptides? Yeah. So peptides are a much more natural source mm -hmm. of the thing that you want to produce. Could be growth hormone, could be testosterone, et cetera. So what a peptide does is basically a precursor to, let's say, testosterone or growth hormone. Those are the two most popular ones if we're talking about kind of the biological re hormone replacement type. So what this does is it does not put the hormone into your body, but as a precursor, as a signaler to produce more in the body. Mm. But again, you, you want to do that only if needed. And so even using peptides, unless you're using them for a specific reason, again, this goes back to bioindividuality, if you have not rebalanced the body, you are destined just to have that inflammation move down a different pathway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your testosterone goes low, but if you don't know that your cortisol levels are high, 50% of people who have a heart attack, men in their 50s, don't have high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So what else could it be? Well, it's also from higher levels of cortisol. And so we have to look at that. So what I always say is peptides before hormone replacement, but before peptides, figure out where the imbalance lies. Mm, I love that, which is hence the importance of testing, which most people don't do, right? Or don't know how to read or don't know where to go. And I know we're doing a special promo where uh, like we're doing like a 50% off thing. We'll, we'll have a link down below where people can test. And there's a link, I believe it's forward slash Omar. We'll put that down below if you guys want to get tested for anybody listening. Uh, but Dr. Cabral, talk to me a little bit also about how, like I mentioned, a lot of our audience is entrepreneurial minded, right? So they might not know about how inflammation causes things like, um, you know, like inflammation and toxins affects things like uh, sleep, uh, focus, mood, right? Like all that. Can we get into like how food relates to inflammation? Maybe some of the biggest misconceptions, you know, people watching this or listening to this may not realize about the food they're putting in their body every day because they might be, you know, you know, meditating or taking the Red Bull or doing these sorts of things that they think are helping. But, you know, like say food is medicine and them not knowing that they're putting food in their body that's doing more harm than good. So can we talk a little bit about inflammation, you know, what foods cause it, you know, or the biggest causes of it, and then also how it actually manifests and shows up in terms of our performances on ours on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Sure. So when we look at inflammatory foods, the most inflammatory foods are going to be hydrogenated oils or vegetable oils high in omega-6s. And But that also goes for any food cooked omega-6s that are oxidized, that are imbalanced with omega-3s. So uh, these are a lot of times are soy bean oil, canola oil, a lot of seed-based oils are not ideal. So in general, oils are not that healthy for you. They're really not. The healthiest oil for you is olive oil from a cold-pressed, single-source organic variety in a dark bottle so the light doesn't oxidize the olive oil either. Mm. Avocado oil would be like a second best. And then you can start to get into things like coconut oil and uh, you could talk about tallow, things like that. But we have to keep in mind, those are higher in omega-6s. Mm-hmm. And so if we're going to do more healthy omega-6s, we need to balance that with more healthy omega-3s. And if not, we're going to have lots of inflammation in the body. Now, the thing is, when you're a teenager and in your 20s, you modulate inflammation fairly easily because you're young, your body has a lot of reserves, it's very robust. But once you start to enter into your 30s and definitely 40s, it's not that you have to age quickly. It's not about that. It's just that you have less reserves because if you haven't been doing the things to take care of the body, it needs more recovery time or you need to put the good things in that help balance it. So omega-3s are actually very simple. It's mainly oily uh, fish. So it's mackerel, sardines, anchovies, trout, and wild salmon. Those are the best ones because yes, tuna has omega-3s, but it also can be higher in mercury. So we want to be careful with those. So we're typically talking about smaller fish. Um, Salmon's one of the outliers because it's actually the, uh, it's a vegan fish. It actually does not eat other fish. And so because of that, it doesn't build up mercury over over its life. Mm. And so those are really powerful. Flaxseed, chia seed, walnuts, sure. Um, They absolutely do have omega-3s. They just don't convert as well. You know, that's the issue with those. Now, anti-inflammatory foods are really brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. So even if you're someone who's trying to reduce your carbs a bit, you can still eat brightly colored vegetables and you try to eat a rainbow because they all have different benefits to them. So blues, I won't go through all of them because we could do a whole show on that. Uh, I literally, I have a podcast on every single question you could possibly imagine. I have 2,500 plus podcasts. So you can kind of like search it, but um, go through all the different colors, but there's reds and oranges. There's whites for the immune system. There's blues. And so all of these are uh, amazing to get in the diet, and they balance then more of the inflammatory-based foods. So those are the true longevity, the only anti-cancer foods that we know of are those brightly colored ones. So you know, be careful eliminating those. And mm, I love that. Um, how about in terms of sleep and the circadian rhythm? Uh, are there things you know? For example, I know I was working with a coach before who was telling me about you know the importance of not eating two to three hours before bed. Um, you know the types of foods you're eating. You know, what advice do you have for people about optimizing their sleep? It's, it is the thing that entrepreneurs typically need to work on first. It's literally <laughs> one of the first things. It's definitely true because for me. we have erratic schedules. Like I could work all night. I could work 24 hours a day. There's, there's not, there's no end of my to-do list, right? right. I'm a uh, doctor of naturopathy. I see and work with wellness clients. I oversee a team, multiple teams. Uh, podcast, like there's all sorts of things to always do, right? So the problem is though, as entrepreneurs, we have to hit the off switch at some point. So there's two parts of the body in the autonomic nervous system or central nervous system. There's the fight or flight, and then there's the rest and relax. The fight or flight is the sympathetic nervous system, and the rest and relax is the parasympathetic nervous system. Entrepreneurs, I actually, I run a lab, it's a, called a biological age lab, and it's based on what's called the Horvath And you could be an entrepreneur that's 35 years old. That's your chronological age. But your Mm -hmm. biological age might be 49. Entrepreneurs age faster than average people. And the reason is, is they deal with higher levels of stress and they don't turn it off. Yes. So you need to work on that. Now, there's multiple ways that we can do that. That's It's it's achievable. Like I I do it. And and that took time. I was a complete insomniac all the way through my 20s. And Mm so what... I can share with people this. The top tips are these. The three, two, one formula for sleep. Three hours before bed, stop eating. Two hours before bed, stop drinking. One hour before bed, and that's just water, no alcohol before bed. And one hour before bed, no blue light. No laptops, no anything. Read a book, like a, a real book. And, and that's really, really helpful for entrepreneurs. And this was the biggest thing for me. This was a game changer. Go to bed, 
within 30 minutes of the same time every single night. Mm. So I, ideal bedtime, I know people don't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it because I like working late, is 10 p.m., 9.30 to 10 p.m. It's early for most people. However, that is the time of the lowest point of cortisol. That is a natural circadian rhythm. I always tell people, you think you're a night owl, so did I. However, if I would have put you outside in a tent for three weeks, you'd be waking up with the sun and you'd be tired by the time the sun sets and it would take a week or so, but you would reset a normal circadian rhythm. The only reason why you're a night owl is because you have electricity. And so then that throws off cortisol production is being produced later and melatonin production then is being dropped down. When that happens, we know from studies, long-term studies on nurses that work the night shift, on average, you live seven years less. And so what I like to do is get entrepreneurs to bed for seven to nine hours every single night. If you exercise, you work out, need a little bit more sleep, get eight hours, sleep from 10 to six. And it's an ideal schedule. Cortisol starts to rise between six and eight. And that's a perfect time to begin to wake up. And so it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, work your bedtime back 15 minutes every single week. Just, okay, you go to bed at midnight, 11.45 this week. Next week, 11.30. And you just slowly work back. Maybe you can't get to bed earlier than 11. That's fine. You know, even if you can get to bed at 11, then that's so much better than going to bed midnight or later. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much. And what time do you go to sleep going up, Dr. Cabral? Is it about- I, I try to get to bed by 9.30. It typically does not happen. So I get to bed <laughs> close to 10. Yeah. I have two daughters, they're eight and 10 years old. Now they're getting a little older. They don't like to go to bed. And so it's like, all right, well, you know, we need a little time once they go to bed. But, um, you know, I, I, I like to stay up, but I don't. And the reason is, is that I realized there's actually more benefit to rejuvenating the body, recovering and waking up earlier. So now I wake up, I always wake up between 5.30 and 6. I used to wake up earlier, but it wasn't good for my body. I wasn't getting enough recovery time. And so I couldn't, when I'm on, when I start at 6 a.m., like I've got my me time in the morning, like that's a whole nother podcast before my family wakes up, but then it's my daughter's time. And then after that, I'm working the whole day. Like there's no off time. Then I work out. Then it's family time. Then it's my wife and I's time. And then it's bed. And I do that Monday through Friday. The weekends are off. And so what I try to share with entrepreneurs too, is it's also the quality of your sleep. If I get seven and a half hours of sleep, I track my sleep. I use an aura ring, but I've used everything. I've used whoop strap. I've used bio strap. I've used, I'm um, wearing a Garmin uh, right now as well. So I track it. And it's really important. You still need 90 minutes of deep sleep and two hours of REM. And if mm -hmm. you're not getting that, deep sleep repairs the body, REM sleep repairs the mind. And so if an entrepreneur comes to me and they're groggy, they need coffee in the morning, they have low ambition, they have low, the dri they have low drive, they have low libido, kind of feel like blah, I'm looking at their hormones, I'm looking at their gut health, and I'm looking at their sleep. And I will figure out why that they are not you know, where they should be. And so it's great to know your numbers. And most entrepreneurs like to track analytics, like our numbers, because it's really important. So track your sleep. It's, you know, track your steps every day and track your sleep. I love that. And I also have an ordering too. So I know, I know the value of it. Uh, it's so, so helpful to wake up and be able to uh, sort of put a number on it. Right. And so, you know, that men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Hence the importance of testing. And like I mentioned, we'll get into the test in a sec here. So let's start with testosterone. Uh, how do people optimize it before they go to TRT, before they go to peptides and they go, oh, well, I have a doctor, so it's fine. What are some foods they can start with to really start helping that area of their life? So this is what I want to share. And I think that this will help with all the other questions. Cool. Are we in agreement that a healthy body can't have low testosterone? Can a healthy body be sick? Can a healthy body have low testosterone? And That's in your nice. 20s, 30s, 40s, when you're meant to have high normal testosterone. Probably not. No. Yeah. I, mean, I would agree. I can, but ideally no. Yeah. So like if you have gas, bloating, acid reflux, joint pain, thyroid issues, um, gut issues, headaches, migraines, low energy, I would say that your body's not healthy. I would say that there's an imbalance. So if you have low testosterone, honestly, that's a symptom. So I need to figure out why you have low testosterone. I do not treat the symptom. That's what conventional medicine does. Mm -hmm. It's also this new form of green medicine. 
let me try to match up why or what food or what even supplement I can do in order to boost this. There's nothing wrong with that. We actually do make those recommendations, but only while figuring out why you have low testosterone. So let me give you an example. You come in, we run your uh, stress, mood, and metabolism test. We look at your hormones. We say, oh, this person has low testosterone, but they have high cortisol throughout the day. Yeah. Now, also, their thyroid numbers don't look good either. And they have low vitamin D and they have high levels of blood sugar. Now I'm saying, okay, Man. due to the elevated levels of glucose, they're not burning as much fat. There's more stress in the body. Sugar, the elevated glucose causes more stress in the body, oxidative stress. Their thyroid's not functioning well. So that's also part of the reason why they have low mood, low libido, brain fog, poor circulation, cold hands and feet, especially in women. And then we look at, oh, high cortisol. Well, think of it this way. It's like a scale. If you have high levels of stress, you have low levels of sex hormones over time. And mm. for men, it's testosterone. And for women, it's progesterone. That's what we see. We've run hundreds of thousands of labs. And so what do I need to do? Do, do I raise testosterone kind of artificially? But then I'm also at elevated uh, cortisol. So now the body's just surging with stress hormones and sex hormones. And that's what like guys are doing today. So they're aging faster, right? Because the cortisol is still there, but they think that they can do even more because we put more testosterone in their body, right? So now they're go, go, go against what their body's trying to do, which is slow them down. Your body stops producing as much cortisol, or sorry, as much testosterone to slow you down. It's to say, listen, like you need to recover. You need to rebuild. And so, yes, there are certain things. So wow. um, there's tribulus, there's uh, forskolin, there's uh, vitamin C, there's zinc, there's ashwagandha. We have a product called Daily Testosterone Support. All of those things are scientifically proven to help and work. So I'm a huge advocate of that. However, it's not just that. I never say, take this supplement and you're good to go. Supplements are one part of my de-stress protocol. Diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset that we all need in order to move forward in life. So what if emotional stress, what if work stress, what if relationship stress is dragging you down. Do we just support with testosterone? We support with testosterone for three, four, six months while then working on the lifestyle, while working on the food. If you're eating high levels of those omega-6s that we talked about, then that's not good. Or maybe you're over fasting. Like a lot of entrepreneurs are doing intermittent fasting, which I love. I'm a huge advocate of it. But if you fast until lunch and you have a super stressful morning, well, that's going to lower testosterone as well, like with elevated levels of, of stress. So it is always about bioindividuality. It's always about finding the underlying root cause and not trying to match up one food or one supplement with one ill. And I wanted to explain that because that. it's a holistic viewpoint. Like it's not like, oh, your cholesterol is high, let's take a statin. Your blood pressure is high, let's take a calcium channel blocker or a diuretic. That's what conventional medicine does. We look at patho phys pathophysiological reasons of why the body became imbalanced. So that while we're fixing low testosterone, we're fixing everything else. Because we can't help but not fix everything else because we look at a foundational level of why a person became sick. What for you was the biggest like aha moment in terms of both your health and helping people? Was there any one in particular that sticks out, maybe a misconception uh, that was shattered or you know, any sort of big realizations that people could really take away uh, from this interview to like maybe rethink about their health in a whole new way? Yeah, it was, it was the concept that I've just had to piece together over the years. And it was essentially the basis for the rain barrel effect. It was everybody can heal. So it took, I didn't know that I could heal. No, like no doctors gave me a chance to get better. Conventional medicine says once you have Addison's primary, Addison's disease, you don't get better. Your adrenals do not start to produce cortisol again. And I was just stubborn enough to not accept that. Right? Like <laughs> it happened when you're in your early 20s, when you think that you're invincible, right. like they were taking that away from me. And yes, I became very depressed, like not being the same person that I, I thought I was going to be. Like you don't live a very long life with Addison's disease. It's just, that's the way that it is. Uh, you can't regulate your immune system. You can't regulate cortisol. You can't regulate blood sugar. It's, it's awful, right? So you can't regulate the how you wake up. You just never wake up. Imagine never producing cortisol. You just I always feel like you're sleepwalking. It's, it's very, very, it's miserable. What I realized was this, though. Everybody can heal. 
And it comes down to this. Everyone, if they are imbalanced, low testosterone, low thyroid, autoimmune, whatever, name it, they have too little of something. It's easy to describe with thyroid. They have too little iodine, too little zinc, too little vitamin B6, too little selenium. Those are all the things that thyroid needs in order to make thyroid hormone. If you don't have them, you're not making thyroid. Okay, so like that's, that's conventional medicine never looks at that. But also, so you can have too little of something, you can have too much of something. With thyroid, you can have too much mercury in the body, too much arsenic, too much aluminum. You could have too much oxidative stress. You could have leaky gut. So bacteria and proteins are spilling out, causing the immune system to then, what's called molecular mimicry, attack the thyroid as well. So everyone can get well. You need to figure out what your deficiencies are and what your toxicities are, bring up your deficiencies and remove your toxicities. And just like I got well in about six months, most people can get well in about three to six months. The hardest of the hard cases, infertility, really bad autoimmune issues take about six to 12 months. But it's not like you just wake up one day and you're well. Even the people who take that long to get well, they get 10% better a month. And when you feel 50% better, you, you, I mean, it's, it's life-changing, right? Like I, even when I got well at 27, 28, which means that I wasn't like, I just wasn't suffering from all those symptoms. I didn't feel like I feel now until about 10 years ago. So mm. like, you get better every single year because the, the body is a biological entity. And the red blood cells, so you have trillions of cells in your body. They turn Red blood cells turn over every 90 to 120 days. So it takes three to four months to really get new healthy cells. And so when you look at that, well, at the end of a year, it's, it's between 90 and 97% of your body has turned over. So you have a new body every year. And it's remarkable. So you just have to stick with the process. People give up in the process too early. And you start with something that works, and then you build on top of it, and you build on top of it. And, and eventually you get there. And it's, it's amazing. It's just like building a business, honestly. It doesn't love happen it. overnight. Yeah, brick by brick. I love that. And I love that you mentioned thyroid, because my sister for years has been plagued with the low thyroid, so I'm probably going to order her a test too. But would you say, doctor, that you know, just for people, they can take a tangible you know, steps away from this. What I'm hearing in the recurring theme is like bio-individuality, right? Meaning understand your own biology instead of saying like, oh, apples are good for sleep, right? Or whatever it is. It's not like a blanket statement. It's hence the IHP rate integrative health, you know, practitioners will help you diagnose, you know, the, the, all the elements of your life that are causing this. But would you say step one is to get tested, right? Just to, you can't get better at what you don't measure. Is that ultimately what I'm hearing is like step one is measure it with a test or some sort of way to put it into numbers. So it's not just you know, how I feel or, you know, something that you can't control? Would you say that's step one? Honestly, I can tell you that some people can get well without testing because eventually they really, they journal, they track the variables and they eventually figure it out. So that is possible. For someone like me, I would never have gotten well without lab tests, without at-home lab tests. This is different than blood work. Your PCP runs blood work to diagnose disease. At-home lab testing looks at free hormone levels, cortisol throughout the day, food sensitivities, uh, candida overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth, parasites, heavy metals, inflammation. Like it looks at all those things that your doctor, your your PCP doesn't look at. So keep your medical doctor. I'm not saying that, but you'd need then an IHB or you need someone, some type of health coach that knows how to do these things or a naturopathic doctor or whatever it might work. And, and here's why. I had too many things wrong with me. It was I didn't have to fix one thing. My vitamins and minerals were off. I had low levels of zinc, low levels of B6, low levels of magnesium. I also had, I had super high levels of mercury that I had no idea that why I had high levels of mercury. Um, I had candida overgrowth, SIBO, small, te- small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and H. pylori. I didn't have parasites, but I had the other three. So it's like, well, which one was it? Oh, and then I had high levels of stress and I wasn't sleeping well. So it wasn't one thing. And right. so what I needed to do was just say, okay, well, these things I'm okay on but these things I'm not. So this is what I'm going to work on. Okay, great. Oh, and then if I don't have a normal digestive system, I can't even absorb all the good foods that you were asking about earlier, right? right. So it's like, oh, well, somebody eats vegetables and they get bloated and gas. It's not the vegetable's fault. You know, humans were meant to eat easy to forage items. Mm-hmm. Killing an animal with your bare hands millions of years ago was very difficult. It wasn't as plentiful as that you could get it today. So here's the thing. That means that you have a fermentable gut. You have candida overgrowth or you have SIBO 
And those things need to be rebalanced. It's another sign. If you get bloated and gas with carbohydrates, it's a sign. Your body's telling you, listen, you have an imbalance in your gut. Let's work on this. So if you're able to, yes, at-home lab testing is the way to go. It's also why when I chat with amazing people like yourself, it's my mission to bring out home lab testing other people. And we literally do it at no profit at all to our company to spread what helped me get well. This is, this is a mission of mine. I plan on doing this for the next 45, 50 years of my life. And so I'm guaranteeing that 80% of the people on your show had never heard about that they could run their own labs right from home with themselves and their family. And so that's the mission. That's the I love that. Absolutely, doctor. So Let's get into it. I know I was fortunate enough to take one of the tests, and um, I took the minerals and metals test. See, dude, I got the whole. I got the whole kit. You guys didn't even pay me. I paid full price, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm a I'm a big uh, big fan of everything you guys do. So I know you're gonna read uh, some of the minerals and metals tests of mine, I believe. Uh, so let's let's get into it with uh, whatever time we have left here, doctor. I'm very grateful. So one thing I want to share with you is that you're working with an amazing IHP, uh, Brianna. Um, I don't know your health history. I know uh, very little. Oh, I know nothing about your health. We'll put it that way. So I just want the audience to know that. So I'm going to read it without knowing. And so some of the things may match up with your story. Some of the things may not. And um, you can edit anything else that you choose to do so. All right. So the minerals and metals test is a hair analysis. And the reason why I like to start with this is because anyone three years old and up can do this. And what it does is it's very, it's an easy one to get started. And all hair is, is a protein. So all we are doing is collected what's excreted from the body. When we look at these, they're not going to match up what's in the blood. They match up with what the body has used and excreted. And it gives us then a basis for where the body is at. You use saliva for hormones. You use a blood spot card for things like vitamin D, thyroid, food sensitivities, omega-3s. Um, you use test for parasites and bacteria, use a urine test for certain toxins. So every uh, sample of the body has a different way of looking at the body. The blood is not the only thing to look at. If you look at that, you'll be like me and it'll take you 10 years to try to figure out what's going on. So having said that, the first four numbers on your hair mineral analysis, by the way, all they do is you take about, um, well, I have short hair, you have short hair. So all you're doing is you're taking a half an inch or whatever you can get for men, for women, an, uh, an inch and a half. And every half inch of here is about four weeks of data. So the closer you get your scalp, the better. Um, and then they mail it in. And all you do is you incinerate it. The company burns the sample and then they get an ash. It's the same exact way that the FBI tests for drug testing and NASA and other, uh, they do all sorts of tests for heavy metals on for pregnancy, et cetera. But it's also how you test food. It's why we know that lemons are very high in potassium because we burn the ash. We actually look at the minerals. So we're doing the same thing here. So when we look at your electrolytes, that's calcium and magnesium and sodium, potassium, it's not how much you're consuming of those things. It is the stress center of the body. When your body's stressed, higher levels of calcium come up, same with sodium. And when you're balanced, everything is in this blue, the blue line, the blue wave is like the ideal. And then there's a black dash. So your calcium and magnesium are above the ideal. That means there's higher levels of stress. You have higher levels of stress. However, we only see this in one out of every 10 cases maybe even less, that your magnesium is actually elevated above your calcium, which means that most likely this is chronic stress, more than six months to a year. And the body is in more of a draw back healing state. It's trying to slow you down. And mm -hmm. the reason why it does that, it says the more you push, the more your body's going to get oxidative stress, the faster you're going to age, the more, or I should say, if you're not already feeling it, the lower energy, lower mood, lower drive, lower libido, lower ambition, maybe even a little bit of exercise intolerance, meaning like you get more sore after a workout than you should. And the reason why these things happen is because you are pushing when your body is trying to pull back and have you heal. And the elevated levels of sodium show a little higher stress response still. So it's not like your body's not strong. It is. But we've got that depleted level of potassium, which is like the reserves of the cell. Does that make sense? Those are your electrolytes. 100%. No, that sounds spot on. Uh, makes me feel like I need to take a chill pill. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But yes. That's right. Well, that's what your body's asking you to do for a certain period of time. And how long? Well, about 12 weeks to 16 weeks. Uh, and then just gradually building back up. Problem is, I did it myself. That's why I relapse so often, 
is I'd be like, oh, I feel great. I'm going to go back to the gym. And then I would train like hard for two weeks and I would get sick again. I'd get swollen glands and all that. So you, you gradually build your body back up. It's just a like callousing the body to build back up. All right. So iron levels, we don't look at on a minerals and metals test unless they're high. You look at the blood for iron. Your copper levels are low. Why does this matter? Okay. If copper levels are low compared to the zinc, which your zinc levels are elevated, it looks good. I mean, you might be taking a good amount of zinc, but what happens is copper drives the mitochondria. It gives you ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and energy. It's also great for the thyroid. Um, it helps with uh, mood. It helps with allergies. It helps with overall, um, if you don't have enough copper, the hair starts to grow grayer faster. So all those things, they all matter. Manganese is elevated. We see manganese elevated as a reserve for the body, like energy. So anytime we see the body not produce enough energy, we always see those manganese levels elevated until the body becomes burnt out. So your body's not burnt out. When you're, If your body was burnt out, you would show low electrolytes, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, all across the board, and you'd show low manganese, but you're not. So that's good. So your body's in a fight-based stage to try to heal. It's not burnt out. Uh, when you get burnt out, then you have brain fog all the time. You've got low mood, low energy. You're depressed. You're anxious. You're irritable. You're overwhelmed. So you want to keep those signs in mind and you know work work to repair. Chromium's, uh, sorry, your zinc I said was was good. I don't know if you're supplementing with zinc or not, but it's a little high. That's okay. We want to use a product called Balanced Zinc to get those copper levels up. And then you know eating high copper foods as well. That that's great to do, like oysters and and items like that. I don't. I'm not a lot of people are eating oysters, but. You know, you can find other high copper. They're good. They're good with some lemon on them. I love them. They are. A little lemon yeah. on there, a little uh, apple cider vinegar or something like that. It gives a little tang. I've actually been taking spoons of apple cider vinegar in the morning. I heard it helps with something. <laughs> it, can. it can. It can help with blood sugar levels and, yeah. and much more. So yeah, if as long as a person doesn't have any gut overgrowth or histamine issues, it can be it can be beneficial with an eight ounce glass of water. Yeah. Chromium levels are a little low. That helps with blood sugar. We typically see this low. There's not a lot of chromium in the soil anymore. Very few plants and items have chromium, uh, but it can be just part of a good daily nutritional support or daily activated multi or whatever you know product you're using should have chromium. Selenium looks excellent. I mean, usually we don't see selenium in the blue, so that's great. Phosphorus is a little high. We don't want that. What that means is that you might be breaking down a little bit more muscle tissue or a little bit more bone than we want, and that can be more of a catabolic state. Now, if you are losing weight or something like that, that can sometimes happen, um, so that's not abnormal, but we don't love to see it there because it means that uh, your body could be lowering metabolism through muscle loss or bone loss. And that could be from stress. Uh, when we move down to your heavy metals, all your lead looks good, cadmium looks good, arsenic looks good, so that's fantastic. There's one little tick of mercury that's nothing to be overly worried about. We do want to lower that, so we'll do a heavy metal detox, of course. What's more um, troublesome is the aluminum is an 18, and it shouldn't be above a 1%. So now we want to look at that. We always ask, when you sent in your sample, did you use hair clippers or a pair of stainless steel scissors? Um, I believe I use scissors. Okay. So yeah. scissors should be good then. If guys use hair clippers, which I recommend don't doing, uh, don't do that. The little aluminum shavings can get in there. And so we just say, listen, we don't know what that is. We can just do a separate sample. But that's why I always just use stainless steel si uh, scissors and then we have to look at why your aluminum level is so high, because this can create massive amounts of inflammation in the body that can then lead to whatever you're genetically susceptible to. So like my fourth, first order of business with you is helping you rebalance the central nervous system in terms of stress. And at the same exact time, it's to do a heavy metal detox to lower those aluminum levels uh, to a much healthier level, because that can be affecting brain fog, skin, aging, inflammation, joint pain. I mean, when you have high levels of inflammation from heavy metals, it can cause a lot. So we want to fix that right away. And we can't. Like, that's the nice thing is like, when you run these labs, there's nothing to be worried about or afraid of because everything has a fix. Like, everything has an answer. So what we saw with you, going back to deficiencies, all right, deficiencies in um, certain things like copper or maybe some chromium, overall, like pretty good. We actually, it's actually more central nervous system based. Uh, and toxicities on this one was aluminum. All right. So like, again, like, now we're getting somewhere. And I know you ran multiple labs, so we just look at, well, what are the other deficiencies? And then what are the other toxicities? Okay, let's work on those. And then if you work with an IHP or someone, because again, it's it's also about, think about it, in business or coaching as well, you need the right coach. So you find the right coach, and then the coach helps you interpret the data. That's why it's so important. It's not the labs that are magical. It's the interpretation of the labs to help you know what to do. 
So do you have any questions on that or, or how did that sound overall with you? Because again, I don't know your symptomatology. I don't know where you're coming from. Yeah, no, I, for people listening, this is the first time me and Dr. Cabral connect, but that was spot on, um, in, including a lot of things, what you're saying. And I love how you touched on earlier in the interview as it relates to that, that a lot of times it's not just about the food or the working out or whatever. It's about the internal environment they were creating. That's not allowing your body to like most efficiently optimize the nutrients and what's going into your body. You might be like, oh, I'm eating the right things. It's not working. And then, you know, kind of get in a, you know, I've been in that place where I get in a slump and I'm like, all right, whatever. If I'm, if eating healthy and working out and doing all these things isn't helping me with weight loss, brain fog, sleep, I'm just going to do whatever I want then. Right. And then that makes it worse. Right. And then it's just this vicious cycle. But I love this new approach. It's brand new for me of just testing. Right. You can't get better what you don't measure. Uh, that way you can measure how you feel. And, and it's relatively inexpensive. I mean, uh, the fact that people can really like learn about what's going on in their body um, you know, for, for, you know, nothing compared to what they spend ruining the body. Sometimes it's just a no brainer. So, uh, I really appreciate your time and coming on Dr. Cabral. And I imagine if, uh, if the audience listens to this, they're going to have a lot of questions. A lot of people wrote in and said, you know, well, what about alcohol, marijuana, smoking cigars, right? How does that affect it? And I want to be respectful of your time, but we have so many more questions. So maybe on a round two, we can follow up and, uh, uh, maybe yeah ha happy to do a part two and this was just this was just a taste you know of like what we can go over and um bio individuality and, and all these different things so I'm, I'm happy to do that i mean again this is this is my mission this is what i do but it's not just me i mean we have uh almost now five thousand integrative health practitioners that have nothing to do with me they run their own show i just try to teach systems to them um we we do an ask cabral on the weekends on my podcast where i answer people's questions I have a team of 20 people on the Equal Life Health Coaching team. So uh, people are in good hands. I mean, they, they ask questions. They can work with an IHP. They can run a lab uh, through the link that you share with them. It is next to nothing. I mean, I just want to share that with people. Like It is literally us just trying to get people their first labs. So they begin to understand their body. That's what it's all about. And so, um, but remember, it's just the beginning. So it's like, understand that you're easing into the process. It's a journey just like entrepreneurship, health is a journey. You're going to get there and there is no arrival, right? Like when do you know when you've arrived in business? It's like for entrepreneurship, you're never going to get there. Oh, it's you the next goal, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about. So it's it's a really great process. It's an amazing process. And um, it's something that I'm passionate about. It's what I love to do and it's what I do in my own life. And so that I think that, uh, that's what I try to share with others. I love it, Dr. Barral. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, for people who... Uh, want to follow you and listen to the podcast, where can they find you and uh, learn a little bit more? My main website is stephencabral.com, Stephen with a PH. And from there, they can find the podcast, which is the Cabral concept, the rain barrel effect, and and all sorts of different protocols, et cetera. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Appreciate it. And we'll have links in the description down below for people interested. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and stay tuned next week. Hope you guys enjoyed.